Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Ghost and Horror Stories Encounters video. Once again, I'm mixing one of these in from the reddit.com website. They are from the rich subreddit called Backwoods Creepy. This one has to do with an entry that is pretty long, very detailed, but it showcases a very frightful encounter, maybe even a mimic, something that a father encountered there on a camping trip while he was out there with his son. You'll hear more about it here in a minute, but later on, when he realizes that there's something out there that is essentially playing tricks on them in a very, very almost evil way, this is something that turns out to be really, really creepy stuff. But it comes from a user by the name of Clyde2003, and they titled theirs as Father Son Camping Trip Didn't Go As Planned. So let's go ahead and let's share this entry here. Fair warning, it is a little bit of a longer one, but it does play out as a good read. So I highly recommend sticking all the way to the end. And then, of course, I'll give my thoughts and opinions afterward. So here's what they state. This story happened just this summer. I'm now only getting around to writing it down. I would consider myself an outdoorsman. I grew up in the sticks. I spent a lot of my life wandering in and enjoying the backcountry. I'm older now and I have settled down within the suburbs. I have a wife, two boys, a house, a dog, a desk job, the whole suburban shtick. I want opportunities for my kids that come from suburban life, but I also want them to grow up with an appreciation for the outdoors. So when my oldest son was big enough for his first solo father-son camping trip, I was excited. My wife and younger son stayed home for this midsummer trip. It was going to be a great bonding experience for me and my son. Because my son is just five, I didn't want to do anything too extreme on our first big solo camping trip. We needed a place that wasn't too deep in the Colorado Front Range, but still allowed for dispersed camping. I don't consider camping in RV parks or established campgrounds to be actual camping. You might as well be at a motel watching TV. Camping at most is a tent, a sleeping bag, and a fire. A dispersed camping area called Gordon Gulch west of Boulder caught my attention. I had never been to this area before. There were no facilities and it was dispersed enough that you couldn't see or hear other campers nearby. Now my son and I had a blast that day. We set up camp, collected firewood, went for a hike, saw a moose and a bobcat. We tried a little bit of fishing and then finally, as the sunlight faded, we returned to our campsite to light a fire. We had a traditional and nutritious camping meal of fire burned hot dogs and marshmallows. It was a good day, definitely a core memory for both my son and me, the perfect first camping experience for a preschooler or so I thought. After all that fun, my son and I were exhausted and it was time for bed. The sound of an evening summer breeze through the pines is better than any commercial sleep aid. I don't even remember drifting off. It was a hard, dreamless sleep that only physical exertion can bring. One thing about my son, he inherited many things from me, such as hair color, eye shape, disposition, and my unusually wide feet. But one peculiar thing he got from his mother was sleep talking. It's not unusual to hear him having full conversations in his sleep, and it gets more pronounced when he's overly tired. I was catapulted out of the void of sleep. I'm not sure what aroused me, but I sat up collecting myself. The world seemed to be at peace. It was quiet, just me and the breeze through the treetops. I couldn't figure out what woke me so suddenly, but the sound of my son laughing in his sleep cut through my groggy confusion. It was a deep belly laugh. Must be a fun dream, I thought hazily. Gently rocking him was enough to quiet him down. That must have been what startled me, I determined. And so as I repositioned to fall back to sleep, my son burst out laughing. I sighed and I closed my eyes. He'll quiet down soon enough, that I thought, but then he laughed again. This time, his laugh was echoed by something outside of our tent. I held my breath and listened. Unsure of what I just heard, it wasn't an echo. There really was something out there, and it was laughing in unison with my son. My grogginess vanished as the adrenaline began to pump. It couldn't be real. It had to be my, my imagination. So I sat up in my sleeping bag, listening to the night. Hearing nothing after about a minute, my muscles relaxed. I started to settle back down. I must have been hearing things. I was tired, after all. Checking the time, I saw it was four in the morning. The sun would be up in a couple of hours. 
And so my son laughed again and again. It was answered with laughter outside. I was now absolutely certain it was not an echo. As I tried to make sense of what was happening, the voice outside called out my son's name. Now my blood ran cold. That voice, it was so familiar, and then it clicked in my brain. It was the voice of my younger son, but that wasn't possible. He was safe at home with my wife, miles and miles away. I could hear twigs crunching beyond our thin nylon tent walls. It was impossible to tell the distance from us, but there was something out there, and it was circling us. Unprompted this time, it called out my son's name in that little toddler voice, My five-year-old, still fast asleep, called out to his brother, asking him to play. The thing outside the tent laughed in reply and urged my son to come outside. That thing with my little son's voice sounded cold, hollow, and dead. And so the floodgates of my adrenaline burst open. Cold sweat formed on my face. I was frightened out of my mind, but my primal caveman brain roared to life. I was now in Papa Bear mode. Nothing was going to take or hurt my son. I was putting a stop to this. Whatever it was that was out there, I didn't care. You don't mess with my kids. Say what you will, but when you're camping miles from anything, it's not worth the risk of being unarmed. Wild animals, wild people, you have to be prepared. I almost always take a firearm with me when I'm camping. Pepper spray and bear bells are great, but nothing gets attention from a conscious threat faster than the sound of chambering around. And so I spoke loudly into the night that I had a gun and was coming out. I hoped the fear in my voice was masked by my aggressiveness. The only reply was the breeze through the treetops. My son was still asleep. That kid's a hard sleeper, which is another trait from his mom. My wife and I had joked that he could sleep through a tornado. And so stepping out into the cool summer night, a gun in my hand and a flashlight in the other, I surveyed the campsite. The fire was now down to embers. Our fishing gear was leaning against the pickup. The firewood was still neatly stacked. Nothing seemed out of place. Not wanting to stray far from the trent or my sleeping son, I sat down outside of the entrance. I waited in the dark with the flashlight off. Not far into the trees, I heard a branch break. And then another snapped, and then this time it was closer. I stood up and flashed my light in the direction of the sound, but nothing was there. That voice called out, this time from behind me, and this time focused toward me. It said, Daddy, Daddy. It was once again my youngest son's voice, crying out for me from the dark forest. And so I threw the light beam in that direction, and I saw a pair of shimmering green eyes, which were illuminated by my flashlight. They were only two or so feet above the ground, the same height as a toddler, and so I took a small step toward it. I wanted to see more. I had to see more, and the eyes, unblinking, remained in place. Getting closer didn't reveal this thing. It seemed to absorb the light from my flashlight, almost devouring it. I couldn't make out its size or shape or color. It seemed to swallow up all the light around it, save for its two shimmering green eyes. This thing actually laughed in its hollow toddler's voice, this time with malice and cruelty in it. The eyes never looked away from me, never blinking, only focused on me, just like a predator before the pounce. Not wanting to give up any ground to a predator, I stepped forward again. It didn't move. Not knowing what to do, I screamed as loud as I could. I waved my arms, trying futilely to shoo it away. The eyes shimmered. And as I stared back, the eyes shifted from green to amber. I watched as they began to rise up into the air. It was now apparent to me that this thing had been crouching and was now standing up. I could only watch in silent terror as the eyes finally stopped rising nearly 10 feet off the ground. The night air erupted with a deep growl. I could feel the vibrations in my guts. I couldn't see a mouth, but I could hear teeth snapping and gnashing. My son in the tent behind me began to scream. That was the only time the eyes lost focus on me and shifted towards the screams of my kid. My only reaction was to fire my gun into the air. The eyes immediately vanished. My ears were ringing, but I could hear the growls turn to shrieks, followed by a cacophony of crashing branches and undergrowth. I stood there until I couldn't hear the shrieking anymore. It trailed off deep into the trees. I was left with only the sound of the breeze in the treetops and the quiet sobbing of my child. 
Twilight was beginning to illuminate the forest. Shaking and exhausted, I sat down in the dirt in front of the tent and I tried to collect myself. Daddy, daddy, where are you? My five-year-old shouted and that got me out of my daze. I picked myself up and went into the tent to retrieve him. Putting in the, in the truck, I locked the doors and wasted little time breaking down camp. We were out of that camp and back on the road by the time the sun broke over the horizon. I have no idea what it was in those woods. I do plan to camp in that area again, albeit without my family and definitely with some friends. I want to find out more about this thing. Thankfully, my son doesn't seem phased by anything that happened that night. He thinks I was chasing a bear away from a camp, and maybe he's right. I hope he is anyway. My son can't wait to go on another camping trip, but truthfully, I'm thinking the next family camping trip might be at an RV park or even a motel. I mean, that's family camping, right? Then that's it. That's everything associated with this encounter. Once again, from the user Clyde2003. So let's go ahead and let's talk about that here. Long story, right? But very richly detailed. Here you have a very creepy encounter where the father and son were out there on a camping trip, apparently at a place called Colorado Front Range. Somebody let me know what that area is. No, I'm sorry. That's where they wanted to go, but then they went to a place instead called Gordon Gulch, which is west of Boulder, Boulder, Colorado. Someone let me know what that area is there, if it truly has these type of strange encounters or not. They ended up going there. They had a blast, at least during the day, and then nighttime they were just exhausted, and then that's when this happened. That's when he heard that his son was laughing in his sleep, and then lo and behold, something was laughing out there. When you think about it, it was really creepy because whatever it was that was out there could actually communicate with the sun during his sleep. Like in other words, he was the sun was sleeping, but this thing out there was mimicking the younger brother and it was communicating, almost having like a conversation enough to make the older brother laugh. And it was doing it through some method involving not actually out loud. Like in other words, it was there in that son's dream. That's really creepy when you think about it because it's so defenseless. What can you do, right? You're sleeping. You don't have much defense in terms of stopping something from doing that. And yet here it was enjoying, quote unquote, that conversation, whatever that was with that son. And then the father, of course, got hold of it and he realized something was out there. It was mimicking the son's voice, the younger son's voice, and it was doing it from a direction uh, nearby the actual tent. And so when he got out there, he got out there with his gun, announced it, thinking rationally that it was something along the lines of still a person, but it wasn't. And then that's when he saw it. For the most part, all he saw was just two eyes. And these eyes were apparently green at first, but then turned to amber. Really creepy when he was stating that no matter if he shined his flashlight on this thing, whatever this was seemed to absorb the actual beam. Like in other words, you couldn't make out anything. Closest thing you could make out was the height and that's only because the eyes started to rise up when he realized that it must have been crouching from two feet to the ground and then standing upwards 10 feet. And then that's when it started having this deep guttural growl and then on top of that, it started gnashing its teeth. And that was not good. Definitely something that was going to be something bad. Luckily, the father, it looks like, had that gun. For some reason, he didn't aim it right at that thing, whatever it was, but instead fired upward. But that was enough to cause it to startle. I could just picture it in my head like a movie where you see something like a deep shadow just running, running as fast as it could, far faster than you would think it could do. And there it was just crashing through the forest, never ever to be seen again. And the son by that point was freaking out. He was already awake and apparently saw this thing as well. Crazy encounter, but all overall, just a very, very creepy experience too. The one part I don't get is at the end when he stated that he wanted to go again. Why? Why go out there? Why go out there again, especially in this area where it almost seems like it's big enough that people aren't necessarily close to each other when it comes to other campers. So you're by yourself. So why go out there? Why bring friends as well in a situation like that? Who would want to see something like that? That would be the furthest thing that I would ever want to do again if I ever see something like that out there. But let me know what you guys and gals think. What is this thing? Like, what could it be? Is it a shapeshifter? Is it a mimic? Uh, someone in the comments was mentioning something called a kushtaka. 
I think I might have talked about that. I'm not 100% sure. Sounds kind of familiar, but they were stating that it could have been that or it could be, as always, a skinwalker or a windigo. Not sure, but let me know what you guys and gals think. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.